Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews episode 66 about the Indian PSLV and the US Delta 4. Delta will be set up in its M plus 5,4 configuration, which means it will use 4 solid fuel strap on boosters and a 5 meter wide fairing. Like this it can carry a payload of up to 7.3 metric tons to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. This time it is the WGS-8 satellite for the US military. PSLV or Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle will launch in its XL configuration using 6 strap-on boosters around its solid fueled first stage. The second stage burns a liquid hypergolic fuel, the third one the same solid propellant as the first stage and the last fourth stage is liquid fueled again. The main payload is Resource Set 2A alongside with 4 nano satellites for different educational facilities. PSLV is the first to lift off tomorrow morning at 4.55 UTC from the Satish Dwan Space Center in East India. It will head south to push its payload on a sun-synchronous polar orbit. In case you live near the city Chennai, you will be able to see the rocket fly pretty much overhead flying from north to south. Something rather special the rocket does is to ignite two of its strap-on boosters mid-flight and not on the ground. These will also separate much later into the flight than the others. The rest is pretty much standard procedure, separating one stage after another while keeping the apoapsis relatively close to the vehicle. This allows it to circularize the orbit without having to restart the engine multiple times. The main payload is as mentioned Resource Set 2A, which is an observation satellite. It uses different types of image sensors in a linear array, working in a so-called push broom scanning mode. Yes, push broom refers to a broom you push dirt with. This means the satellite will snapshot a full stripe on the ground after another, instead of scanning it from left to right. This would be called a whisk broom scanning mode. The whisk broom technique can utilize the complete sensor area multiple times for such a stripe which leads to a higher resolution. However, the downside is the shot takes longer and the mechanism has also a certain chance to break. Once the upper stage finishes its job, it will first release the main payload and right after that the secondary satellites. Delta 4 will meanwhile wait on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral to lift off at 23.53 UTC on the same day. However, the launch window is almost an hour long and extends into December 8th. Delta will head eastwards and similar to PSLV stage its boosters away in pairs. All of them are ignited right after liftoff but will burn out with a 2 second gap. The payload WGS-8 is as the name suggests the 8th of its kind and stands for Wideband Global SETCOM. It is a communication constellation consisting out of 6 satellites in a geosynchronous orbit. These have a very high data rate in the gigabit per second range which is an order of magnitude meaning at least 10 times higher than what the US militaries were used to before. The main purpose of the globally available high data rate is to deliver high definition footage from reconnaissance drones like the MQ-9 Reaper for example. After the extremely long 50 minute burn of the efficient Delta IV upper stage engine, it will coast for a few minutes to do a last 3 minute burn to put WGS on its geosynchronous transfer orbit with an apoapsis at 45,000 km and a periapsis at roughly 400 km. Just by the way, 44,000 km is almost 10,000 km higher than the final geosynchronous orbit but allows the satellite to circularize its orbit a little easier. Once it raised the periapsis to a geosynchronous 35,000 km, it will decrease its apoapsis accordingly. Now in the end I want to give a little shout out to my patrons. Thanks a lot guys. These people support my monthly crowdfunding campaign for this series and if you want to contribute as well, simply follow the link in the description. Ok, that shall conclude episode 66 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.